guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. <laughs> I hate that intro. Let me try one more time. Hey guys. <coughs> hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be putting some makeup products to the test and we are not gonna go lightly on these products. Basically, I went on, basically. <laughs> I don't know why I put basically. I did, I went on Sephora's website and I went to foundations and then I put top rated and then I scrolled all the way to the bottom to the lowest rated foundations and then I pulled that product or I bought it and yeah, we're gonna test out. <laughs> We're gonna test out a full face of the lowest rated products at Sephora right now. I messed up on one product. I even went to Sephora to pick up all the things that I didn't own, but I messed up and I forgot to grab the brow product. And then I went to see if I had the brow product, which was a Makeup Forever pencil, and I did not. Oh, lovely! So in replace of that, I'm gonna be testing out the new Urban Decay Brow Prop Blade, which a lot of you guys have asked me to test anyways to make that up to you guys. I hope this is a great replacement. No, it is not a lowest rated brow product, but it's gonna be a replacement. A lot of these products actually I've never tried before, but we're gonna try them today. And then a couple of them I have. I disagree on a couple and then a couple I have no idea, we'll find out. But without further ado, let's go ahead and sing that subscribe song and then we'll jump right into the video. Subscribe to my channel before you leave. So subscribe! Okay, let's jump right in. Whoopsie. Hello there. <laughs> Okie dokie artichoke. The first product will be a facial primer that we talk about today. And I've actually tried this. Actually, Casey Home bought this for me because I was so excited about it. This is the Magic Anti Shine Flawless Base Primer from Natasha Denona. I really, really like this product, but it is one of the lowest. I think it actually is the lowest rated primer on Sephora's website, which was shocking to me and I actually disagree with. But I mean, there are different, um, this is what it looks like by the way, but there are different productions, I guess. And maybe some productions weren't the same as mine. Everybody said it felt sandy and grainy. And I was like, what? It doesn't feel like that at all to me. It actually feels like butter. Like I put a stick of butter on my face. It's like super moisturizing and I feel like it like, creates like a tacky, you see that base onto the skin. I really like this facial primer. So maybe people, they did a bad batch of it, but I haven't felt any graininess in this at all. So this is great to me, but that's my personal opinion. So what's great is the next product I highly disagree with as well. And I'm gonna call my lawyer and sue. So the primer had three stars, three out of five. And then this foundation, this is the brand new Vanish foundation from Hourglass and it already has has three stars. Excuse me? I mean, so many people are right in there. Oh my God, I got my smile lines. It did this, it did that. And I'm like, what? What do you mean? Don't you ever talk about her again? I'm calling my lawyer. I'm suing. Oh my God. I am gagged. So first of all, this is the liquid to the stick foundation. Now, as you guys know, the stick in Vanish is my all time favorite. Now I tried out the liquid and I had really high hopes. I've worn it like for three days in a row and I've absolutely loved it. It does not get in your smile lines whatsoever. And I had the most gnarly smile lines you'll ever see in a person. And it wears so well. I am obsessed with this foundation. How dare anyone say anything bad? But this just goes to prove that we all have different experiences with makeup and that's okay. My M6 brush from Morphe. That's what we're gonna be using. You can use my code Laura Lee in store and online. <laughs> Shameless self promo. I made a mistake the first time I tried it and I gave it three pumps. It says you're supposed to only use one pump for your whole face. So because I'm Laura and I like a lot of foundation, I use like 1.8 pumps, almost two pumps, but I don't go too crazy. Here we go, look. So I like this brush a lot to blend it out with. They do have a foundation brush that you can blend it out with if you want. Also another little warning with this foundation is that, so I use the shade beige in the stick. It is a little bit darker than my skin tone, so it matches my neck, but shade beige in the foundation is just a little bit too dark. Like it's a little different than the stick. I don't know if that's because it's oxidizing, but you can see it's like kind of orangey. So I'm gonna blend this out. But if you can see the pigment is like really extreme in it. 
I'm gonna just blend this out. It just has like extreme pigment, very lightweight, and it doesn't get in your small line. So if you have mature skin, I do recommend this to you. Maybe go in Sephora and get shade tested for this um, because I'm actually gonna go buy the um, shade one up from this shade. Beige is just a little bit too orange. See, this is like 1.5 pumps and I just can't get it to really reach quick enough. I will say you do have a little bit of play time with it. It does dry down semi fast. It wears very well. Like if you need a long wearing full coverage, this is great. Sorry, the foundation part is kind of long in this video, but I really wanted to talk to you guys about this foundation and I always put it in my ear. I don't know if you guys do this, but you always want to run that foundation through the side burn, just buff it on the ear. And anytime a pro makeup artist has done my makeup, they always buff it in the ear as well. She's still going. Can you guys see like that this is pretty orangey compared to the stick? So it does oxidize a little bit. If you're used to your shade in the stick, I think you should probably get a shade lighter. So despite the reviews, I'm obsessed with this and I think it is a fabulous foundation and I definitely recommend it to you. Hashtag not sponsored, just truly love it. Okay, next up for concealer is my babies and my true loves, Laura Mercier. I haven't really tried this concealer yet, so I don't have an opinion on it. We'll just try it out together. But this is the Candle Glow concealer and highlighter. I have shade two and three. I'm gonna try out shade two. <laughs> Very indecisive there. These I already had, I didn't have to buy. But people were complaining that you have to click them a bazillion times to get them going. Did I try this out in a video already? I could have, my brain goes so crazy and honestly I try out so many products. I don't know sometimes, sometimes I forget. I mean, I'll be the first to admit that. Anyways, they were saying you have to click forever. They feel like there was no product in the tube and they said that it was not full coverage but I don't think they advertise these as a full coverage concealer so fair enough. So here I go. All right, so that was shade two. I'm actually glad I went with shade two because this seems not even that bright. So I'm just gonna buff it out. And I think it actually looks really nice. I mean, I get the complaint that they're like, yo, there's like no product in the tube. Then that is a problem because these are high-end products we're talking about here. So the price does kind of go upward. But I think that was like the main complaint on this. And there was a couple about the coverage, but I mean, yeah, you can still see my dark circles, but this one doesn't advertise to be a full coverage. And that is why I typically go for a full coverage concealer because I have these bags that are not Chanel, they're Walmart. And they just, I try to cover them and move on with my life. So my overall review of this is I like it. I think it looks really beautiful, glowy and natural, but if it doesn't have a lot of product in it, then that's just the tea. And I'll read to you. It says it has zero point 0.07 fluid ounces in it. Let's check out a regular concealer and see how much it has in it. KKW Beauty has 0.162 ounces. Bijoué has 0.139 fluid ounces. So yeah, this does not have a lot of product. So there's that. That got three out of five stars. Next up, the Rainforest of the Sea Setting Powder by Tarte. This also had three stars out of five. So people were complaining that it turns yellow immediately or an orangey color whenever you set your concealer with it like it's just got too much pigment in it and it's not translucent so it's not just baking it's actually turning a color okay here we go I mean, I'm already kind of orangey looking, so. This powder, it smells like vanilla cupcakes and it is very fine grain. So I like that about, ooh, I'm turning so mad. Ooh, my skin feels like velvet. Velvet, honey, velvet. <laughs> it's setting to the gods, but I can see what you mean. Like it's not brightening whatsoever. It does have a little pigment to it, you know? It might be like darkening the concealer a little. So just be aware of that, but I gotta agree with you. But gosh, it feels so nice on the skin. I wonder if it has flashback. Let's take a picture with a flash and find out. Let's get crazy. <gasps> oh my God, the flashback. Guys, look how yellow for me putting this all over my face. It has extreme flashback. <laughs> Beware. If you're taking pictures, that's not gonna be your girl. Let's move right along. Okay, next up is the shade light. Now it was these mini contour kits that had the problem. The lowest rated was actually the Natasha Denona Sculpt. They said it didn't have any pigment and it was the individual contour sculpt bronzers, but they weren't selling them. So I was like, oh, okay. Those were only online. So they this was the next lowest rated product. I heard her sculpt and light were like the best thing ever shade light. So I bought it in medium and I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna take an E53 brush. 
Oh my god, guys, look how patchy this shit is. Oh my god. This looks terrible. Hold on, I think I just need to keep blending, huh? What do you guys think? Oh, I don't like this. What is that? What? Oh my god, guys, it's not blending. It's like mud. I don't even remember exactly what was so bad about this, but I'm about to look it up right now and I'm about to tell you. And I hate that I have to just keep going with it, but it's like weird because as you saw, I set my face so it shouldn't be sticking to my foundation at all. I just feel like it looks muddy. So that's a no, and I'm gonna look up what people were saying in the reviews that was so bad about it. There are 29 reviews on it. 10 people out of the 29 gave it a one star, which is not good. A lot of powder came up from it. A lot of pigment, which I found very hard to blend. Uh-huh, right there, would you boo? I would pass on this, very disappointed. Dry formula, I'm disappointed. Okay, so this looks like a mess, girl. I just can't, I just can't sometimes. Okay, let's move on to blush. So for blush was the Guerlain and it's their heart shape blush. This is a $63 blush and people are just saying it's powdery AF. This is truly the worst rated blush. It doesn't look like a good blush. Guerlain makes one of my favorite primers in the world. So I was kind of sad to see this, but it tea, it's just a tea. So this is an E3 brush. I'm just gonna sweep it across all the colors. It looks like I just put white chalk on my cheek and I hate this so much. <gasps> this is, oh. guys, do you see that? It looks like white powder. I don't know if you have to be super fair to wear this or what exactly this is about, but it's a strobing blush luminizing powder. It just looks horrible. And if anything, I feel like my pores right here look a little bit bigger. I can straight up tell you this is gonna be a hard no. Let's move on. The worst highlighter was the Becca Chloe Malika collection. This got really bad ratings and people were saying that this is simply a novelty item if you are a collector, but it is not a good item to use. Um, I think they did have a lot of great pieces in the collection, but this is kind of a gimmick. I have to say, like, come on, let me whip out my word, a gimmick, a gimmick, a gimmick. So what I'm gonna do is swirl this brush in it. This is the R36 highlighting brush. It's little X's and O's and I have to admit it's really, I dropped them. <laughs> Imagine, honey, one spill and you're done. So here we go, let's see. <gasps> Where? Honey, get out the magnifying glass cause we can't see anything. <gasps> I mean, okay, let me give it a little credit. Right here, right here. But in general, like you're supposed to be blinded right now. Tap a little bit more on. Yeah, it's a flop, it's a dud. Girl, give me one of these X's so we can make this work. It literally is just like nothing. Don't, don't, don't do that. I think if you wanna collect something from the Becca Chloe Malika collection, maybe just skip this and get like one of the lipsticks or something like that because I've heard great reviews on those. I haven't tried them yet, but I've heard great reviews on them. So this, I, I have to agree, this is a flop. These reviews might be onto something. Let's go ahead and try out the Urban Decay. This is the Brow Blade. Now I have one little problem with this already. It doesn't have a spoolie on it and I do my eyebrows with a spoolie. Like that's a spoolie. Fully is 50% of the work for me with my eyebrows. So that is already a problem off. This is in the shade Dark Drapes and it has like a little micro pencil on one end and the other one looks like a little pen liner, but what it is is a tint. So you're supposed to be able to flicker the tint up, which I will do first and then fill in the rest of the brow with the pencil. One thing I can tell you that I already like about the ink, it gives you play time. Like once you put the ink down, you're not doomed. You can still wipe it away. So I do like that. My brow looks kind of crazy. I'm sorry, I'm not used to using like an ink liner situation on my brow. That is where it's a little weird for me. I like the brow pencil a lot. Like it's super nice. I wish they just popped a little spoolie on it and we'd be ready to go, honey. So the ink part is just honestly not that bad. Let me try again. I feel like my first try, I should have like done little hair, like strokes, and that would have been better probably. All right, we have one eyebrow thicker than the other, so I'm just gonna take some of this Jouer concealer and clean up my brows really quick. 
All right, that's good enough. <laughs> Let's move on to eyeshadow. Two of the eyeshadow palettes that are low rated were kind of like clearance seed out online. So I was like, okay, I couldn't buy them in store. I tried. So the next lowest rated product that's like available was this mini sunset eyeshadow palette. So she has the bigger palette and this was the mini and this is 25 bucks and these shadows are pretty freaking small and you only get five of them but we're not gonna be shocked here because we know Natasha Denona is very high prize makeup people were saying the shimmers didn't have any pigment to them and it got I believe this one was like at a four point something or was it a three it was kind of low that's what I know in the palette, you have two matte brown colors and then three shimmers. And this one looks like a nice little brow bone and inner corner shimmery color. I'm gonna take an M506 brush and I'm going to tap into the lightest brown shade. And I'm just gonna work that right there in the crease. And we'll start this off as our transition shade. And with this tiny little brush, I'll just do some tiny little circle motions. Some tiny ones. So this light brown color. And I'm taking it all the way from the inner corner, like around the town to the outer corner. And then I'll just blend it until my arm falls off. Sweetie. Ah. So I feel like the mattes are blending really well so far, but the complaint on the reviews were the shimmers, not the mattes. I'm gonna take an M573 clean up blender and just soften up those edges by just giving it a quick little run through. The next shade I'm gonna tap into is the brown color and I'm going to use the same little detailed brush. Okay, so I went ahead and did the other eye obviously and I really liked, look how much pigment this has by the way. I really like the shimmer. I didn't have any problem with it. I, I used all but the cranberry color and I didn't have any problems. So I think it's great. I think 25 bucks for these little five shadows is, girl is up to you and what your wallet wants to spend money on. But it's a high price. And I know 25 bucks isn't a crazy price, but for this, by the way, I'm taking an R39 and I'm just gonna blend these edges and soften it up, baby. If I buy a $1 concealer and it's not my whole world, I'm not gonna rate it to tear it apart. You know what I mean? It's like, come on, it was a dollar. Whenever you go and you get like these really expensive things, people rate them hard. They're not playing around, so. Look it, look it, let's move on. I'm gonna put this color on. This is the color I used, the goldy bronze. And I put it on with the M124, all these numbers, girl. All right, so here's the color dry. It's really pigmented. Isn't that nice? I'm gonna go ahead and dampen it a little, but I just wanted to show it to you dry so you got the fair idea of what it looks like. I typically dampen almost every shimmer, even my own brand, because it helps with fallout and you just get the maximum pigmentation. So it's like, why not? You can use like a drugstore setting spray. It doesn't have to be Max Fix Plus. You can also take a little water bottle too, if you wanted to, and dampen your shadows. Also, I'll take this little brush and just soften up those edges that has a little bit of that dark brown on it. And then I'm gonna go in with the light brown matte and just go ahead and buff that all the way from the inner corner right here and just bring it around the town. And this is an R39 brush. And then I'm gonna tap into the darker brown and I'm gonna drag it on down. So for mascara was actually the NARS Climax Mascara. Now it wasn't the lowest rated, um, the Tom Ford one was, my score was out of it, and then the Buxom Mini was, and they weren't selling that Buxom Mini anymore. Then we ran into this one, and people were just saying, I believe it got four stars, so it's not that bad of a rating, but people were just saying it's a very messy mascara, and kind of flickers everywhere. I personally, I do like this mascara. I don't have a problem with it. Do I agree that it's a little messy? Yeah, it is, for instance, right there, but it's because because the mascara is so pigmented and low-key a little watery so it does kind of flicker everywhere when you apply it but it does the lashes pretty good I have to admit by the way I did take a little of that goldy bronze color and I buffed it right in the center there and I just did a little bit of it just to give a little extra pop to the under eye. For lashes today, I didn't do the lowest rated lashes because that is literally your opinion. So what I'm gonna be doing is using a pair of lately my favorite drugstore eyelashes. I'm going to be using the Double Wispies by Ardell. I have been obsessed with these. I just got them at Target.
Target. This is my second pair I'm using in one day. It's a long story. <laughs> well, actually, Nicole Guerrero was using the original Ardell Wispies, which made me, while I was at Target, go pick some up because they look so beautiful in her Valentine's tutorial. So I was like, ooh, let me get some of those. But then I saw the double up and I was like, skr, skr. So I always trim them and I'm just gonna add a little bit of duo lash glue. You Okay, and what I like to do is I like to bend them and shift them like that so they're already kind of curled and then I will just apply it onto my face. These are my jam lately if you don't want to spend 30 bucks on lashes. And you do want a little bit more of a heavier lash but with a comfortable band because I truly cannot even feel these on my eye like whatsoever. This is where it's at. Now if you don't want them that thick and you want a comfortable band just do the Ardell Original Wispies not the Double Up. Those are so pretty. Yes, ma'am. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply these to the other eye and I'll be right back. I think the eyes look super pretty. The mascara, um, you can't really tell it's on my bottom lashes, so there's that. But let's talk about this lipstick. This was like by far the lowest rated lipstick. People were just not into it and it's because it is the Color Splash Sea Glass Lipstick. Sunset Cruise is the one that I bought. People are just not having it. They're like, girl, this is glitter. It looks insane on the lips. So it had really bad ratings. Pretty rough. So I'm gonna apply it. Okay, well, I don't know what's so bad about it. It literally just like shimmer. I mean, it's not that bad. It just like, am I gonna put this on normally? No, I'm not having it. Mm -mm. But I mean, it's just like a really comfortable shimmery lippy. Is it a little sparkly? Yes. But this is a very up to you situation. Like, what do you think about this? I probably wouldn't wear it every day, but it is really comfortable. Like, it's not that bad. The ratings like toward apart. And I'm like, oh, a little harsh, good low. But I mean, people feel some type of way about it. So that is my review. But first, ow, I just hit my elbow. <laughs> but first, I'm gonna grab a little bit of that. And I'm gonna apply it to this inner corner. And I'm gonna apply it to my nose because my nose doesn't have a highlight and I'm upset about it. And I'm just gonna hit it right here. Shazam! So let's recap all the products. The primer, I personally like it. The foundation, I love it. The concealer, I see what you mean. It not having a lot of product, it being kind of pricey. It was a little bit creasy up in here, so I didn't like that about it. The powder, super flashbacky, and I think it did turn my makeup a little bit darker, so beware of that. The highlight was a flop. The bronzer, I didn't like either. The blush was a complete and total flop. Uh, the brows were great. The eyeshadow palette was great, and I've had a little trouble with Natasha Denona before, but this I really didn't. The lashes are great, but they weren't low rated. The lipstick is just like not my everyday lipstick and I don't live, but it's not that bad. So I'm like on the, I'm on the fence with the lipstick. The mascara, it's all right, it's all right. It's, it's, the, it's not a bad mascara. It's just a little messy, so you have to be careful with it. So that is my review. I hope it is helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for being here and watching. I love you guys so much. Be sure and subscribe to my channel before you leave. Subscribe today. Okay, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Peace.